Of course we would. So so the whole debate about whether it was a win uh, ignores the fact of the attack. And that has to color uh, Israel's response, because the next time they see ballistic missiles heading toward Israel from Iran, they could have nuclear warheads under their nose cones. So, John, your former area of expertise, national security advisor to Donald Trump, if you were currently advising the US president about what they should be saying to Israel and what they think the response should be, what would you be saying? I would say that there has to be a very substantial uh, response on the territory of Iran because what Iran did was attack Israel's territory from its own territory. That's as classic a definition of an act of war as you can get. Uh, And that uh, the Israelis could look at a range of things, all of which I would find acceptable. Certainly the first thing they should do is flatten as much of Iran's air defense capabilities as they can to make sure more of their missiles uh, get through and their pilots uh, over Iran are safe. Second, they should destroy all of the bases that uh, from which the attacks on Saturday night were launched, including any arsenals of drones and missiles that might be found at those bases. They could consider attacking headquarters of the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard and conventional military who ordered the attacks. I think they could consider destroying substantial parts of Iran's oil infrastructure. Uh, And I think uh, whether they launch a kinetic attack against Iran's nuclear program or perhaps just the mother of all cyber attacks against it, uh, they should go after the nuclear program too. John Bolton is the former national security advisor to Donald Trump and ambassador to the UN and joins us now. John, good afternoon. Glad to be with you. Look, David Cameron is saying to Netanyahu, show restraint. Do you think he will? Well, I don't I don't know what the Israeli cabinet will do. But, you know, the first reaction of uh, the UK and the US governments to Israel was to do nothing. Uh, Joe Biden said, take the win uh, because no one was killed in the Iranian attack as if staying alive is a big victory. That's that's normally the the way people live is by staying alive. Uh, Our our missile defense work did did uh, an excellent job. But staying alive doesn't constitute victory. So now both the Biden administration uh, and your foreign secretary are saying, well, we'll be restrained and we, we, none of us want an escalation of the war. So is it the, and, and the Biden administration, I think it's, I'm speaking equivalently here of the U.S. and the U.K. governments. Mm-hmm. Are, are they indifferent to who wins this conflict as long as it doesn't escalate? Would it be OK if there were no escalation that Iran prevailed over Israel? I don't think they'd say yes to that. So so what are they really talking about here? Uh, you know, it, it, what the Israelis have been trying to do ever since October the 7th is not live under the threat of constant attack. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, perhaps both UK and US governments have forgotten the ancient concept of victory. I mean, that you when we talk about enemy, victory, and yet was... they don't attack you anymore. I mean, Biden did say take the win. As far as he was concerned, that that was a win, not just sort of from saying a loss of there was no loss of life, but from how effective Israel's response had been. It sounds like you just cut in there because this is important. This is a very important point. Both The Wall Street Journal uh, and CBS uh, yesterday reported, citing U.S. official sources, that that of the roughly 120 ballistic missiles that Iran launched, part of the 320 total projectiles that they launched, of the 120 ballistic missiles, half blew up on the launch pad or crashed before they got close enough to Israel to be engaged by the missile defenses. Now, just imagine that Iran's uh, missile uh, uh, salvo actually delivered 120 ballistic missiles. that could have overwhelmed the missile defense capabilities that Israel, the UK, France, the US yeah. were providing. So, Crucially, so before though, that we word, say John, what a is, great win is it, it is, could before have. we say what a, let me just finish here, please. Before we say what a great win it is, let's acknowledge that some significant portion of the, the win was the junk that uh, Iran puts in its ballistic mm. missiles. To be clear, it's Biden that's saying it was a win. It's not me. And we, we've got to look at what did actually happen. And it, it seems very much, John, as though you're suggesting there should be some kind of response. I wonder what you think then would be the most appropriate response from Israel next. 
Well, let, let's. I want to stay on this question whether there should be a response at all, because I think that inevitably colors the, the question uh, how big it should be. Do you believe there's a politician in, in Great Britain other than perhaps George Galloway uh, that if the UK were faced with some adversary firing 320 ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and drones at the UK, whatever the casualties were afterward, that they would not insist on retaliation? We, I don't want to get stuck in hypotheticals here, John. I'm asking no, no, from your area important. of expertise. Before we lecture Israel, before we lecture Israel, shouldn't we ask ourselves what would we do in a similar situation? Let me take it from the U.S., a non-hypothetical situation. Uh, we were attacked by Japan on December the 7th, 1941, suffered thousands of casualties, lost five battleships at Pearl Harbor, and enormous destruction. Now, what if the Japanese had attacked, but we were prepared to defend? We didn't lose any battleships. Pearl Harbor was not nearly destroyed. We didn't suffer thousands of casualties. Would we not have declared war on Japan anyway? Of course we would. So so the whole debate about whether it was a win uh, ignores the fact of the attack. And that has to color uh, Israel's response because the next time they see ballistic missiles heading toward Israel from Iran, they could have nuclear warheads under their nose cones. So. John, your former area of expertise, national security advisor to Donald Trump, if you were currently advising the US president about what they should be saying to Israel and what they think the response should be, what would you be saying? I would say that there has to be a very substantial uh, response on the territory of Iran because what Iran did was attack Israel's territory from its own territory. That's as classic a definition of an act of war as you can get. Uh, and that uh, the Israelis could look at a range of things, all of which I would find acceptable. Certainly, the first thing they should do is flatten as much of Iran's air defense capabilities as they can to make sure more of their missiles uh, get through and their pilots uh, over Iran are safe. Second, they should destroy all of the bases that uh, from which the attacks on Saturday night were launched, including any arsenals of drones and missiles that might be found at those bases. They could consider attacking headquarters of the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard and conventional military who ordered the attacks. I think they could consider destroying substantial parts of Iran's oil infrastructure. Uh, and I think uh, whether they launch a kinetic attack against Iran's nuclear program or perhaps just the mother of all cyber attacks against it, uh, they should go after the nuclear program too. What involvement would that involve from the US and the UK in terms of them saying, look, we'll support one of our allies in, in Israel. It's, it sounds as though, John, you're suggesting something that would be an, an escalation of the current environment. Look, the escalation began on October the 7th. Uh, that's like saying, let me come back to Pearl Harbor. My goodness, you, you'd consider war across the Pacific. That's an escalation. That's, that's really terrible, isn't it? If you're entitled to act in self-defense, it's not an escalation to defend yourself. If, if that's the argument, uh, then, then, then there's no point in in having a military at all, because heaven forbid anybody would escalate. The fact is, the regime in Iran is the biggest threat to peace and security in the Middle East uh, today, bar none. If it weren't for Iran arming, equipping, training, and financing Hamas, the Houthis, Hezbollah, the Iraqi Shia militia groups, we wouldn't be in the war we're in now. Iran is the source of the conflict. 